just sitting amongst some handsome Monterey shale. It's a beautiful outcrop here. You can see the definite deposition layers within it. It's tilted at an angle due to uplift. Now, it's a sedimentary rock, and oftentimes within sedimentary rocks, you can find these unique formations within them. Let's see if we can find one here. What we're looking for is in the frame right now. Do you see it? There's actually two of them. Where's Waldo? Right here. One, two. See them? Those are big rocks. What are they doing in the shale? Now remember, shale is very fine sediment that was deposited in a deep ocean and then was compacted. So if this was in a deep ocean, then how did these big rocks get within that those layers? Did a dinosaur chuck a rock? Are they dinosaur eggs? Many people think they are, but they're not. Now trust me, I'd love for them to be dinosaur eggs, but they're not. They're called concretions. But how do they get in amongst the shale like that? Well, here's one right here. Sure looks like a dinosaur egg. No velociraptors here though. It's definitely a rock, it feels like a rock. So how do these form within shale layers? Well, as the shale is being formed, again, it's, it's layer upon layer of fine sediment. Now, sometimes deep in the ocean, you'll get a foreign object. It could be a, a tooth. It could be uh, a little fossil, a piece of a bone or something. And that creates somewhat of an irritant. If I use, can use the analogy, it's kind of like uh, an oyster, right? You get an irritant within it and it starts to build the pearl around the irritant. Well, the same thing happens here. There's, there's an uh, irritant, so to speak, within the layers, and then the minerals start to precipitate out of the layers and they congregate around that irritant, that foreign object. So they start to build around it and then build more. So they build this concentric circle. The minerals, calcite primarily, uh, fills in the voids between all the sediment particles and creates kind of a hard structure. So this is actually done when the sediment is, is still malleable and wet, and then basically turns into this concretion. So the rest of the layers are kind of crumbly, but these are rock hard, pardon the pun, uh, because all these those little voids within it are filled in with that calcite. So what's interesting about these concretions is the foreign object is still in there. And a lot of fossil hunters will cut these open to find out what started this process. So what's really cool about these concretions is that they uh, resist erosion more than the shale they're in. So as the shale starts to erode away like this hillside, they pop out of it just like that. And then they come tumbling down. And as you can see, the state park has collected a few right here. Uh, we'll go over near the road and you'll see a bunch of them that have come out of the hillside and rolled all the way down. I see that one up here has been broken open. I think some local geologists have been working on this one. Let me see if I can climb up there without getting in trouble. Okay, so here's the concentric concretion. So some foreign object is in the center of that and then all the calcite is precipitated around it and created this hard resistant structure. So again, a fossil might be in there. We just won't know what it is unless somebody cuts into it. And this is a state park, so I can't really do that. Let's go check out the other hillside and see if we can find some more. Here's another concretion. Many people will mistake them for turtle shells for obvious reasons. So I'm right next to Pacific Coast Highway here in Newport Beach. This is kind of a road cut into the Monterey Shale. And right here, you can see a, a concretion starting to peek out of the shale right there. It's gonna fall. And one already had fallen down here, see that? But check out what the city had to do. They had to install K-Rail because the concretions fall out of the shale and they'll roll out into the lanes. And they're dense. They would definitely do a lot of damage uh, to your car. I think there's a concretion right here on the corner. Let's check it out real closer. Yeah, wow, that's a big boy. So this guy right here, look at the size of that guy. That's a concretion that is eroding uh, much slower than the shale around it. So the shale's gonna break away 
this guy's gonna fall out and then hit the K-rail, just like that one has over there. So, pretty interesting stuff, huh? Now the state park has collected a few of these uh, concretions, some of the more interesting ones I wanna show you. They're really cool looking. Okay, so check out this concretion and how unique it is. So it looks shattered, right? So what happens is these form in very wet environments and then as they dehydrate, they actually will fracture. And then the fractures are gonna be filled, and in this case, it's calcite. So all this, these crystals in here are calcite. These are also calcite. They're ugly because we're so close to the ocean, so they're probably just oxidized and weathered, so they're pretty ugly. But how cool is that concretion? This is a great example of one. So this is, you see the rounded concretion? It's got the dehydration cracks. And it looks like somebody's actually cracked this in half. So this is, oh, this is beautiful. This is all calcite right here. So this was a fracture and it was filled in with this calcite. Look at that double layer calcite. So the other half broke off. So you're kind of seeing the whole sheet of calcite there. How beautiful is that? These are crystals of calcite. But this is a concretion. They're very unique, really cool objects. I had to come in again to, this is amazing. So let's see if I can zoom in here for you on this calcite crystals. Look at the intricacy of that. That is amazing. Calcite crystals in a concretion. That is simply beautiful especially this area right in here and up here the crystals are so big awesome so i'm sorry to disappoint you this is not a dinosaur egg no velociraptors in here right right but they're still just as interesting in my opinion